This is CouncilCast, part of the Legal Talk Network, and I'm your host, Karen Conroy. When you face a complex case outside your expertise, you bring in a co-counsel for next-level results. When you want to engage, expand, and elevate your firm, you bring in a marketing co-counsel. In this podcast, I bring in marketing experts who each answer one big question to help your firm achieve more. Here's today's guest. Hey, uh, my name is Grant Baldwin. I am the founder of The Speaker Lab, where we teach people how to find and book paid speaking gigs. So uh, outside of that, more importantly, uh, I'm married to my high school sweetheart. We've got three beautiful daughters. It's me and a house full of women. Uh, and I absolutely love my life. I love speaking and I'm excited to hang out with you today. Grant, thank you so much for being here. This is going to be a great conversation. We are going to talk about speaking. Um, but more specifically, the question we're going to tackle is how is speaking a marketing strategy? So I feel like for lawyers, this is a really great, uh, avenue for marketing that they don't really necessarily consider that way. So, um, so this is your angle. This is speaking is kind of what you speak about <laughs> all day long. Yep. And so let's talk about first, um, let's, let's kind of break it all down. Like how, how do getting, how does it work to get speaking gigs? How can you use that in your benefit? And then how do we angle that in terms of kind of a marketing strategy? Yeah, let's start. Let me give you kind of a, a high level overview of the process that we teach in terms of how do you get started? How do you find a book speaking gigs? And then we can kind of jump off from wherever there. Yeah. Um, but what we teach is what we call the speaker success roadmap. It's a five step process that makes the acronym speak S P E A K. Okay. And so the first part of the process S is to select a problem to solve, select okay. a problem to solve. So there's a couple questions here that are really important to think through. Number one is who do you speak to? And number two is what problem do you solve for that audience? Okay. Now the dangerous thing here is oftentimes we want to spread the net as far and wide as possible. And so who do I speak to? I don't know. I speak to people. I speak to humans. My message is for everybody. And like, <laughs> yeah. that just doesn't work. Right. Uh, and then the other part of the equation of what problem do you solve? Again, it's like, sometimes I'll ask speakers, well, what do you speak about? And they say, well, what do you want me to speak about? I can speak about anything. I yeah. can speak about, you know, being an attorney. I can speak about being a parent or business or marketing or sports or hobbies. It's like on and on the list goes. And even if you know something about these various subjects or topics, doesn't mean that you want to try to position yourself as a go-to person yes. on that. And yeah. it's not exclusive to just speakers. Like that's the case for attorneys, you know? So if I go to an attorney and I say, what kind of law do you practice? And they say, well, what kind of law do you want me to practice? It's like, no, 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 no. hang on here. Like yeah. there's a massive difference <laughs> yeah. between, you know, an IP attorney versus an injury attorney versus a divorce attorney versus, you know, like a malpractice, like on and on and on the list goes of all these different types of attorneys yeah. that, that have their specialties. And right. it's counterintuitive, but we know that like the more specific, the more narrow, the more focused you are, the easier it is to attract speaking gigs and the easier it is for an attorney to attract the right type of client. Yeah. So one thing we always uh, we always tell speakers is you want to be the steakhouse and not the buffet. The nice. steakhouse, not the buffet. Meaning, yeah. like uh, if we're looking for, if we're, let's say we're going out to eat, we're looking for a good steak. Like we have a choice. We could go to a buffet yeah. where steak is one of a hundred things that they offer and they're all mediocre. Right. Or we could go to a steakhouse where they do one thing, but they do that one thing really, really, really well. Right. Yeah. So I always think do... of the the kind of do you pronounce it niche or niche or I, this word drives me I've nuts. Heard both. I've yeah. Probably gone back and forth. I don't okay, know I got so we'll go with whatever you want to go with. Today we'll we'll go niche just to make niche it, it to mix it yeah. up. Okay. It sounds pretty So it I've heard fancy. this yeah, exactly. We're going to get this is going to be a fancy show. So um I've heard this compared to like going to see a doctor. You've got an injury mm -hmm. and you walk into a doctor's office and you're like, "Okay, I need you to fix my knee." And they're like, yep. oh, you know, I could, I could look at your foot, could I could look at your arm, you know. It's like, no, 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 no. That is not, that's the last thing I want to hear when I'm in a doctor's office is, you know, I've worked on some fingers and, you know, maybe I could do a knee. It's like, come on. And you need to consider yeah. that in terms of the way your client is coming to you too. They don't want you to be like, yeah, I could do it. Maybe, you know, we could, it might work. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> like, yeah. No, like the more specific you are, the more confident you're going to be in that topic. And then that just, plays out in the, all of those conversations. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it's uh, the more specific, the more narrow, the more focused, the easier it is to find clients, to yes. attract clients, the easier it is for you to be referable. Because when it's kind of like, you know, if you're, hey, I'm coming to your town, I'm looking for tacos. It's like, oh, here's the place you need to go. Yes. Versus like, I'm looking for food. It's like, <laughs> uh, you know, like that's kind of yes. vague and generic. And I don't even know, I don't even know where to send you for that. Yes. You know, exactly. But real something real specific. I'm looking for tacos that's on the water that has a great margarita or whatever. And right. it's just like, oh, perfect. There I got it is. The two yeah. spots that you need versus 
versus like something vague in general. So that's a big part of the process there yes. is getting clear on that. Because yep. when you're clear on that, then everything else that we're going to talk about becomes much, much simpler. Yeah. Okay. So that's the S. So that is selecting the, the group that you're going to serve, right? Yes. Or, or what does yep. the S stand for? With, with yeah. Your... Select a problem to solve. Select. So and okay. even within that, there's a couple of questions that I always encourage people to think about. Again, who do you speak to? Number two, what problem do you solve? And then kind of a third question here that I think is important for attorneys to consider on this is where do those people gather? Yes. Where do those people gather? So if part of the point, if one of the main, main drivers of being a speaker is for lead generation, for credibility, um, for name recognition, for notoriety, for rec uh, for uh, prestige, anything like that, then you want to think through like where do those people gather? So for an attorney, a lot of this depends on what type of law that they are going to be practicing, right? Yeah. So um, it may make sense for you to kind of reverse engineer and think through not even necessarily like, you know, my ideal client is a demographic of between this age and this age and, you know, is a, uh, a working mom that has 2.7 kids and, yeah. you know, they live in this zip code. It's like, no, no, no. Like, Think through just kind of like what are the things that they're involved in? What are yes. the groups, the associations, the clubs, the churches, the activities that they are a part of mm -hmm. that they would naturally attend, that they would be a part of? So kind of working backwards and even thinking through your current clients, the clients that you've worked with historically, what are some of the commonalities there? Yeah. Like what are the things that bring those people together and where do they gather? So again, that's the S, selecting a problem to solve. The uh, the next part of the process. Pete, I have a question to, about the S before yeah. you get, get to the next letter. Um, so, and what I found just to make a comment on like finding that place, once you find the right place, all of a sudden, like everyone starts to mention, oh, I saw you here. I saw you there. You know, like, mm -hmm. and that name, you know, pretty quickly that you found the right place. Okay. I've got, you know, four people who've contacted me t this week and they all mentioned that place. So it's like, bang, there it is. So my question though, is a lot of my clients work, uh, they're the, one of the first things they mention when we start working together is we don't need SEO. We don't need a major marketing strategy. Our clients come through referrals. And so mm -hmm. we talk to other attorneys, maybe financial advisors, people who are going to refer us that business. So is it possible that when you're doing that S and you're selecting the audience and figuring out who you're speaking to, that it's not your potential clients, but that it's referral sources? Mm-hmm. Okay. No, absolutely. Because sometimes it's it's um, uh, it may not be the person, but they know of someone. Yeah. Uh, and so one of the things that's important in the process is make sure like everyone in your sphere of influence knows what it is that you do, right? Yeah. Because for example, my mom doesn't book speakers, but she may know <laughs> of someone who does. She yeah. may hear of someone. Right. And so if they don't, if if my mom or whoever doesn't know to to think of me or doesn't refer me because they're, they're like, oh, I didn't I didn't even know you were a speaker. I didn't even know yes. that you did that. And I think especially for an attorney, an attorney like they're primary thing, the primary hat they wear is as an attorney. Yeah. So there may be a lot of people in your sphere of influence that real are like, I, I didn't even know that you spoke, you know, yeah. and it's not necessarily like you need to do a hundred gigs a year. I think this is one thing that's important to note for uh, the speaking industry is there are speakers that do a hundred gigs a year and speakers that do five gigs a year. Yeah. So for an attorney, it's like, I'm kind of busy. I've already have things going on, but it may make sense for you to do two, three, four, five, ten things a year that are the right type of gigs that help to generate that that um, uh, that uh, momentum as a speaker. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it could be potential clients that you're thinking about, but it also could be referral sources. But whoever it is that's generating those leads into your mm -hmm. office, so first select that select who that audience select who you're speaking to. Okay. So now we're going on to the second letter. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and one other piggyback thing I'll mention yeah. is like you mentioned, like from the referral sources, you can also think through of like, hey, the majority of our uh, leads come from uh, from financial planners. Awesome. Well, now you know who you need to be speaking to, not yes. necessarily their clients, but where those referral sources are coming from. Because if you know it's financial planners, well, there's naturally going to be associations, conferences, groups, gatherings that they are a part of that you could be you could be a good fit for. Yeah. Okay. All right. So SP, what does the P stand for? This will go quicker from here, I promise. <laughs> All right, the P is to prepare your talk. Prepare your talk. So this is where you just, you're clear on the solution that you're going to provide and how you're going to provide that. Meaning, are you gonna do keynotes or workshops or breakouts or seminars? Are you doing things virtually? Are you doing things in person? As an attorney, are you working with clients all over the country or just uh, regionally or geographically or just they have to be in person there locally? Yeah. That will probably dictate and determine a bit uh, of what types of speaking that you may be doing. So right. again, prepare your talk there. And what you're uh, saying too, right? Like, you know, if you're speaking to financial advisors versus potential clients, mm -hmm. you're going to be saying something different to each of totally. those groups. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, uh, so next prepare. part of the process, E, is to establish yourself as the expert. Establish okay. yourself as the expert. So two key marketing assets that we highly recommend is number one is your website, which uh, if you don't have a website, you don't exist. People won't take you seriously. Yeah. One caveat here I would say is probably every attorney watching, listening, they have a website. But if there's nowhere on there that indicates you're a speaker, again, yeah. people won't think of you as that in that in that role. So it's important that maybe you just have one page uh, there and it doesn't even necessarily have to be this very prominent thing, maybe just somewhere in your, like a, even at the bottom footer of your website, but just something to say if someone's interested in con or considering hiring you, that, that they're able to look at that, that gives some legitimacy and credibility to you as a speaker. Sure. So website's important. Another thing that, again, if you're wanting to do a lot of speaking is that it's important to have a demo video. Now, what exactly oh, is okay. a demo video? So a demo video, think of it kind of like a movie trailer. Yeah. So before any of us would go see a movie, we want to see the trailer. Yeah. And a, a trailer is basically you take a, a two hour movie, you boil it down to two or three minutes. And within those two or three minutes, you have an idea of who's in it, what's the plot, what's the theme, what's the genre. And the point of a movie trailer and the point of a demo video is to make people want to see more. Okay. And so that's what you're trying to accomplish because as a, um, as an event planner, a decision maker, they are in the risk mitigation business. Right. Meaning like when they hire someone, they put you up on stage, they hand you a microphone they are putting their neck on the line. Like, I hope this is going to be good. Yeah. I hope you're not going to say anything inappropriate. I hope you're right. not going to embarrass me. Yeah. I hope you're going to make me look like the hero. Like, right. you, you just, there's a lot of hopes there. Yeah. And so a demo video kind of helps remove some of that risk. Uh, maybe you're a phenomenal speaker. You're just not really what we're looking for, or the yeah. style of the event. I don't know if you click well with our, uh, with our audience. So a demo video kind of reduces some of that risk and gives them kind of a little teaser preview of what it's like to work with you. Okay. All right, and so normally do you just kind of put that together, throw it on YouTube or Vimeo or something, and then just have that available on your speaker page or how? Yeah, do you, exactly. Yeah. So it should just be on your, your site there. And okay. again, you don't need like, you know, let's say you've given a couple of presentations before. Um, it doesn't need to be like, nobody's going to watch all 45 minutes. You don't right. need to watch like 30 minutes of a movie to determine if you want to keep watching the movie. You yeah. need like two minutes of a trailer. So Highlights. take like, yeah, <laughs> two, three minutes, like your best content, your, your strongest material, and, and you, can, you can use that and that can, that can be very effective. But don't give away the material either, right? Because you don't want to like just have the whole speech out there. Um, you're trying to do the trailer where like you still leave all the best parts for the potential speaking gig. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. also remember, like, two, three minutes is not a ton of time. Yeah. Um, and, and you just think about, like, people in general, their attention spans. Like, if I sent you a video, uh, like, all of us, if someone sends us a video, the first thing we do is we go to the corner to see, like, how long is this? And yes. anything that's more than a few minutes is just, like, Forget four it. minutes. Yeah. Like, that's an eternity <laughs> yeah, in online right. video land. Like, ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah, right. So you, you want to keep it short because they're not going to watch the whole thing anyway. You yeah. Know? Same thing with, like, a movie trailer of you may watch, like, 15 seconds and realize, nope, I'm yeah, out. Not for exactly. me. Right? Nothing yep wrong with the movie it's just not what you're not your looking thing. for yeah okay so we are on a right we got the spe <laughs> all right so a i'm trying to think of what that would might stand for hmm. Hmm. decisions decisions we're gonna go with acquire paid speaking gigs acquire okay. paid speaking gigs. okay now, this is the part we want to fast forward to like dude just tell me like how do i find and book gigs but yeah again if you don't have these other foundational pieces in place first it becomes really really difficult to be able to book gigs sure and at this point it is much more than just okay i have my website i got my video and now i just sit back and I wait for the phone to ring the same thing is true with just being an attorney you know when you finish law school and you hang up your shingle as an attorney you can't be like all right I'm doing it. Here now I am. Just people are just going to start flooding, <laughs> right. flooding in. Like it doesn't work like that. Like <laughs> building a speaking business or even doing a few gigs is very similar to building any service-based business, like an attorney. Yeah. It takes time and it's, it takes momentum, right? Right. And so the, I, I heard uh, a friend say early on, like the more you speak, the more you speak. Yes. Uh, because you you get better at it. You get more practice. People yeah. start to see you. You start to build some of those referrals, that word of mouth, and the repeat business that you work with. So yes. the same thing is true with being an attorney as it is a speaker. So that reminds me you, of when I had when my first child was an infant and I was reading all these books about sleep, which at that point, it's all we were focused on. Like, mm -hmm. how do we get to sleep more? And one of the best sleep books that I read, um, the, the whole summary was sleep begets sleep. So yeah. the, the more they're lacking in sleep, the more they're going to be you know, grumpy, they're going to push back. And it's the same thing for so many things in life. And so the more they're sleeping, the more they'll gonna, they're going to sleep. Same with your speaking gigs. 
Yep, yep. <laughs> but so the point is, again, like doing more than just having a website and a video. Like you you, you have a, a nice website, you have a nice video, like nobody cares. Like right. Your mom is thrilled. She's going to tell both of her friends. Nobody else cares. <laughs> exactly. So you, again, you, you got to do something clicks. to kind of get the ball rolling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if you know, let's go back to like the um, a good referral sources, financial planners. Well, yes. if you do a, a quick search, like there's a lot of events specifically for not for financial planners. So at that point, it's easy to start some conversations with them, reaching out to them. If you already work with financial planners, you probably have some referrals, some connections there. You can kind of figure out what are the associations you're a part of? What are the conferences you attend? Yeah. What are the groups that you're, you work with that the potentially could make some introductions for you? And at that point, like when you're reaching out or talking to an event planner, or decision maker, you're not trying to convince them to, to hire a speaker. Like they're already planning on hiring a speaker. Yeah. You're just showing them why you are a good fit, while you are providing a solution to the problem that their audience already has. So that's the conversation that you want to start to have. Uh, but again, it's so much more than just kind of like sitting back and waiting for the phone to ring. Yeah. Okay. So kind of do the, be assertive, find those connections, kind of work the connections you already have. And um, I feel like what you were saying about just asking those questions to even to my clients all the time, like, okay, so what are you reading? Like where, what publications are you reading? Where, what events are you going to? Where are you going? And that kind of information just opens up a conversation that where it's like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. That's the last thing I would have expected. Um, but you don't know unless you ask. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. So the, the last part of the process, K, is to know when to scale. Know okay. when to scale. Meaning that people who are interested in speaking are also typically interested in writing a book or coaching yeah. or consulting or doing a training program or offering some type of service like being an attorney. And so you can do all the things. You just can't do all the things at once. Right. So something's going to come first. Something's going to come last. you got to be clear about how does speaking fit into the mix of what it is that you want to do. Okay. Uh, and so one thing that, that's important to kind of think through uh, especially for attorneys, is how you want to position your brand uh, as a as a speaker. Meaning, like um, we, we've talked a little bit on financial planners. I know uh, two specific financial planners I'm, I'm good friends with that have built very very successful financial uh, uh, planning practices because they've done a great job building the content and the recognition and the um, authority um, on a uh, on an online basis with blogs, with websites, with um, uh, podcasting. Uh, uh, with YouTube videos that just show like this person, these guys like really know what they're talking about. Yeah. Uh, and that authority that they built through some of these other different channels has really dramatically increased their, the financial planning that they do, the clients that the, 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 and the leads that they generate. So again, the point being is like, you have to kind of think through like how does speaking fit into the mix of what it is that you're, you're trying to accomplish as a, as a speaker and as an attorney. Yeah. So this comes back to the, the main first question, like where is, where does it fit within your overall marketing strategy? So first of all, do you have a marketing strategy <laughs> and yeah. it needs to fit inside of those those pieces and i find that um you know i think podcasting is one of the places where people sort of dip their toe in the water of speaking because it's it's kind of you know it's presenting yourself yep. talking you know having these ideas and and going to some audience and i find that um I have appeared on a lot of podcasts. I know you have. We both have podcasts. And there's so many variations on how it's done, how people mm -hmm. organize it, and what the angles are. And sometimes I've been on these podcasts, I'm sure you have, and it's so haphazard. I'm like, what yeah. are we talking about? What is the point here? Like, what do you right. want me to talk about? Because how, that should there should be a plan. Like, what is the plan? <laughs> and, yeah. and let me fit within that plan. Um, my favorite is like, let's talk about your journey. Like, where did yeah. you, <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? And so as soon as I see that as a question in like the intake form, I'm like, okay, red flag, we're not doing that. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. it's like, what is that, that, what? <laughs> totally. Yeah, okay, so how can, how does it work to kind of fit this whole idea of speaking um, inside of a marketing strategy like that, how how can you? What are some tips and suggestions you have for for making that all work within a bigger a, a bigger plan? Yeah, one of the great things about speaking is it is a great way to again build that know, like, and trust with an audience and with people, right? Yeah. And so it is, um, you know, one thing like you and I are, are multiple st uh, states apart and time zones apart, and so there, you know, there you can talk with someone, connect with someone virtually, but when you're in the same room, and especially when you've seen a speaker and you there's a certain level of recognition and again authority and credibility that we ascribe to speakers. So if you're in an event, you see someone speak, and you just like I just get a better sense of who they are. 
are as a human yeah. being. Can I trust this person? Do I like this person? Would I want to work with this person? And so as an attorney, if there's some specialty that you're offering and then you are speaking to a uh, an audience of those potential clients or you're speaking to people who could refer you and like, hey, all the time I'm getting asked for, do I know anybody who could help with this? And that's something that you do and you've built that rapport and that connection with that audience, then it opens up amazing doors for you to be able to, uh, for, for lead gen for your business. So I know of several speakers where their primary role is they, they are the rainmaker for what it is that they do. So one guy in particular, they have a massive, um, uh, advertising agency, uh, and he is the primary guy that goes out and speaks. He gets paid really, really, really well to speak. And then they have the agency on the back end, uh, that, that, um, provides a service of what he just talked about. So it may just be like, you know, Hey, here's the, you know, the, the, from an attorney standpoint, it may be like, Hey, here's the, the three things that you need to do to reduce the risk and liability that you have in your business that you're missing right now. Right. Yeah. You share that. And there's gonna be some of those things, like some, an audience can go implement and apply, but there may be other things where an audience is like, can we just hire you yes. to come apply that and yes. do that. I don't, I'm not going to do that, but I would love for you to teach or train or implement or apply those things in our business to help, you know, reduce our risk and liability. So having that kind of approach and that kind of mindset, you can absolutely use speaking again, not only as a, as a credibility and authority booster, but also just from a lead gen standpoint of people who are going like, Hey, everything you just described is exactly what we need. Can we just hire you to do it? Yeah. And honestly, I have clients who that is one part of their a significant part of their strategy where they present a lot of information they talk about how complicated some of these things might be if you are trying to do it on your own or or you're trying to figure at, it out and you know do you know try to some of some of their uh clients try to DIY their their legal issues and yeah. they present it in a way where they present the the potential issues they could face the the risks there um, facing. And then it's a very easy, oh my gosh, I didn't really recognize what, um, mm -hmm. what I was getting myself into. And then the, the path to hiring them just becomes easier because all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, I think I need, uh, I, I, I need somebody to figure this out for me. Yeah. Um, so where, so switching over to the idea of the actual speech itself and getting out there and talking, where is, do some of these speeches go wrong? I feel like there's a place where all of a sudden it becomes boring and they're um, just kind of regurgitating information you might have already seen the, on their blog or for whatever reason, it started out strong maybe and then all of a sudden it's like you can just feel the room sort of deflate. Yeah. What's happening? Yeah, yeah. So there's definitely like a natural tendency for people just to lose interest, and uh, it is it's difficult to hold an audience's attention for a long period of time. Like a good example is uh, like a stand-up comic. You know, yeah. if you look at a, a good stand-up comic and you watch a Netflix special that's an hour long. An hour is a long time to really hold people's attention when people are just they're distracted. They've got other things going on, other yeah. things on the radar. It's really hard to be fully present, just as a default for humans, right? Right. So as a speaker, as a comedian, whatever it may be, it's, it's it's hard to keep people, you know, continue to, with pattern interrupts to keep people engaged in what you're doing. I think one of the best things that any speaker can do uh, is to really spend the time to practice and prepare. Okay. I think a massive mistake that that speakers make is assuming like, okay, I know all this stuff. It's all just kind of in my head. Yes. I'm just going to maybe scribble some ideas on a napkin and hop up on stage and wing it and it's all going to work out. And it'll, like, feel, it just like, it'll feel organic. It'll feel more it fun. It doesn't work like no. that. It's kind of it, like, again, let's 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 go back to the, uh, let's make it uh, practical for attorneys. Of if you're, if you're, I've never been an attorney, but if you're preparing like your opening statement or your closing remarks or anything like that, then you're probably not going to be like, ah, and I kind of know the gist of the case. And so I'm just going to hop up there and hope it works out. No, like yeah. you really, you think it through, you practice it. You yeah. may bring in um, uh, sample jurors or sample juries to practice it on. You yes. may bring in like outside consultants of I'm going to try this and see, you know, is this the message that I'm trying to get across? Is this coming across in my body language and my emotions, right? There's thought and, and uh, intentionality that goes into all of it versus just like, yeah, just hop up there and say some things. Yes. And hopefully I'll win the case. Like yeah. that just does not work. So I Ever. think the, 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 <laughs> the biggest, best thing that you can do is really spend the time to practice, to prepare. So one thing I actually do 
is I spend the time to like actually manuscript out what I want to say, like word for word. Now, I'm not viewing it as a script where I need to say this exactly word for word, but I want to have the gist of it, the idea of it, the, the, the concepts. I really want to have those down. Now, there may be like some key points of, okay, I really want to, this line, I want to say just like this. Yeah. Um, but the other parts, like I just kind of want to know the essence of, of where I'm heading and think through like, does this flow well? Does this make sense? Does this resonate? Is this confusing? Yeah. Is this tracking? But again, just the thought process process and intentionality and preparation that goes into it ahead of time versus just trying to make it up on the fly. Okay. So two follow-up questions. So what do you do in the middle of, like, say, let's say you're supposed to be up there speaking for 30, 40 minutes or whatever, mm -hmm. and you do sense that people are just like, oh, okay, it's maybe just after lunch. They're all mm -hmm. just kind of, you know, it, maybe it's not really you. It's just the moment that you're in. Totally. So yep. how do you, how do you keep it flowing? Yeah. So, um, when I finish a talk, uh, the, and uh, I'm kind of thinking through and assessing how a talk went, there are three factors and variables that go into it. Okay. okay. Uh, one is me. Like, was I prepared? Did I do my part? Was I ready? Uh, so there's, that's certainly a factor. Another factor you need to consider is the audience. Um, did, did they show up? Did they, were they engaged? Right. Yeah. So let me give an example. Let's say that uh, I'm going to speak to a group of, of, uh, sales reps and I'm speaking at some of their, one of their sales conventions. And right before I get up to speak, the vice president of sales hops up and says, Hey, it's been a rough year. Um, <laughs> sales haven't been where they, where we hoped they would be. Unfortunately, we're going to have to lay off 20% of you. We're going to have this speaker speak as soon as he's done. Then we're going to, we're going to tell you who the 20% are that's no longer employed. Please welcome Grant. Like, it doesn't matter what I say. No. Like nobody's listening, Everybody's right? like texting each other. Totally. Yeah. Totally. So like the, the, the audience is definitely a factor. Sure. Another, the third factor is going to be the environment. Uh, and let me give an example. I remember a few years ago, I was speaking at a, an event in New Jersey and, uh, I go there and it was a, I was speaking in a, I was doing a keynote in a room that sat 2000 people. And, uh, for this keynote, they had 2000 people in there. So uh, a room that holds 2000, that's, that has 2000 people in there is perfect. That's what you're looking for. You want yeah. a packed house. Yeah. Um, but then right afterwards they were having me do a, a small breakout and there's like 50 people, but they had me do it in the same room. Oh no. So 50 people in a room that seats 2000 yeah. is awful. Yeah. Right? So the environment is absolutely a factor. Yeah. So it's important just to kind of assess like what, you know, are the things that I can do, the things that I shouldn't, you know, that I, I need to be aware of. It's not like pointing the blame at the audience or the environment, but be aware, like those are absolutely factors. Sure. So if you are presenting and you just recognize I'm speaking at a conference and it's a full day conference and I'm doing the last session of the day, People are tired. You mentioned yes. like if it was after lunch, if it's before lunch, if it's at the beginning of the conference or at the end of the conference. Yeah. I remember doing a session one time at a big conference and the workout or the workshop room was like a half mile away from oh, everything no. else. And you're just like, it's just, it's just a, it was in the Atlanta convention center, just this uh, massive convention center. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like, you're just way the heck out there. Like you just got to factor those things in, yeah. be aware of those things. So the other thing I would say is when you are speaking, when you're creating a talk, you are making an educated guess. Yeah. I think this is funny. I think this will make sense. I think this will resonate. I think this will work. But you don't really know until you get up in front of that audience. And so when you speak, you should not be speaking from scratch every single time. So assuming you're using speaking on a regular basis, let's say you just do five gigs a year, right? Every yeah. other month or so. Let's say you're doing that. That shouldn't be like five separate distinct talks. Like each time you give a presentation, you're getting that feedback. You're going to be able to refine it. So think of it like cooking or baking, right? You're making something. I'm not a chef or a baker, but if I'm making kind of an educated guess, like, okay, I think this is work. And then you taste it. Mm, it's too salty. Uh, it needs a little bit more sugar. Yeah. Ah, we need to cook it a little bit longer. Ah, we overcooked it. Like you, you don't know until you're kind of making educated guess and then making these tweaks. So each time you speak, if you know like, okay, I've got five presentations this year and it's each to a different audience, but it's always to financial planners and it's always kind of the same general idea, then you should be giving the same presentation. And the fifth time you give that talk should be much better than the first time because you get that real time feedback from yeah. audiences. Okay. That's, that's, so sit down, do you sit down afterwards and kind of make notes for yourself? Like, okay, uh, this, you know, this is what I need to do differently next time. And, and, you know, kind of 
tweaking it as you go. Yeah, and that's also where like the, the more you do it, the more comfortable you feel. Sure. You know, if you're speaking once a year, you're just kind of like, it's like, wait a second, how do I do this again? You yeah, know? Um, exactly. It's kind of like riding a bike, not entirely. Yeah. But if you're, if you're speaking on a regular basis, then you probably know like, okay, I, I made a mental note of that didn't work or that worked. Yeah. Um, I mean, one thing some speakers will do is they will either record themselves on audio. You could easily do that with your phone and just set it on the lectern or podium there. Um, you could have it if, it's, if the video is recorded, you may be able to watch that back. There may be some like filler words or kind of go-to phrases that you use all the time that you're just not even aware of or something you do with your face or your hands or your gestures that you're just, again, not aware of. And this is like, none of this is like probably that much different than what an attorney would do when they're practicing, you know, you know their opening arguments or, or closing uh, remarks or closing arguments where they're, they're really thinking through all of these nuances there and they're really analyzing it. And there's just thought and intentionality that goes into it. Like those are the things that you're already doing as an attorney that will also make you a good speaker. Yeah, I think that's really valuable because uh, in your head, it, it's always different than what actually happened. Because even for myself, when I listen to these podcasts and I play it back, I'm like, what am I talking about? Why am right. I saying that? You know, and so I'm like, I don't remember even saying that. And, and why did I do that? You know, and so I'm like, okay, next time, just, you know, be quiet. And, and I will say the first probably five to 10 recordings that I did, I took a lot of notes and I was like, okay, I need to stop this. I need to do more of yeah. that, you know? And it's like, like you said, you just keep, get better over and over. And the more you do it, the better you, you get. So, um, I think the thing that people are, aside from booking paid gigs, the thing that most of my clients are mostly interested in is how to convert those gigs to clients or, or I suppose referrals. If you're, you know, kind of meeting or speaking to re potential referral sources. So what's the best way, um, without being too kind of used car salesy, um, to provide that information and be a valuable resource, but at the same time recognize that, okay, at the end of the day, I want something to happen. I don't want to just yeah. be sitting here as sort of a chari charity and, you know, just yep. handing out all this information. Yeah, so there's a couple different ways you can do this. Uh, one of the 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 best ways that, or one, I'll give you a couple of things. One is that when you are speaking, it's helpful to kind of connect the dots that of what um, what you were looking for from the audience, right? And what I mean by that is maybe um, as an attorney, if your primary goal is to generate and attract uh, cl potential clients or leads that could could potentially be clients, then you can share some case studies or examples or you know clients that you've had in the past. Of you know we were working with this client who had this situation, yeah, and it's almost like it connects the dots that this is this is what you do, right? Yeah. Because sometimes people see you in one context and they don't realize other contexts where where you may be, um, uh, may be able to, to work with them or help them, right? Sure. So again, being clear on like, what is your goal to get more clients? Is your goal to get more speaking gigs and being able to connect the dots for an audience in that way? Uh, and I think that, that once you're clear on like what that, what that, that primary goal for you is, Again, you can kind of seed that throughout a presentation, but at the end, you can also give some kind of clear call to action of, hey, if you know of any clients or if you are a client or if you've dealt with this or if you struggle with this or if you'd like to just have a free consultation or if you'd like to talk more on this, here's the next step. And the next step may be, depending on the size of the group, it may be, hey, I'm going to be available at the you know the rest of the day at the conference. Come find me or I'm going to be uh, over here right afterwards. Or I'm going to be at the back of the room. So I'd love to chat with you. You can do simple things like that. If it's a bigger group um, where that logistically may be a little bit more challenging, then you could do something that may be as simple as uh, having some type of what we would call like a lead magnet. And think of it kind of like you, uh, I'm not a fisherman, but if you go fishing, you know, what's the what's the bait? What's the lure that you are using? Yep. And so it may be like, hey, we talk through these three different things that, um, you know, that you that you are, are leaving yourself open uh, for liability. And these are things that you need to improve. Um, you know, uh, I've got actually two more. And so I'm going to give these to you for free. Just go to either this this link or scan this QR code or text this number to this word and I'm going to send those to you for free but some type of lead it could be a PDF it could be a report it could be a video it could be booking a call it could be you know hey I have a you know I have a book and you can get a free copy and here's the step you need to take but something to that audience where again re role reverse here if you're sitting in the audience and someone says hey you can get this thing for free yeah. is it valuable enough where you're like yeah I'm going to scan the QR code I'm, I'm going, going to, to give to them my link. email I'm address I'm going to do the thing. Yeah. 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 So not everybody wants to hand over there. their email address. And, 
I think everybody needs to know what's in it for them. Because, you know, for myself, yep. I can't stand spam. And I only very sparingly give away my actual email address. And I have like a spam email account where it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, here's my email. And it's not. Yep. It's the, the one I never check. And I just give it to people because I feel bad. Um, but I feel like once again, kind of coming back to this idea of the marketing strategy, this is a piece that a lot of people leave, just leave off and they don't really think about, and they don't want it to come across as salesy, but without this piece, you're kind of missing the whole point. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's like, you're just leaving business sitting there on the table. Yeah. People won't think of you again in that role if they don't know that this is what it is that you do. Yeah. And it's like you, you have, again, let's, let's go, let's roll reverse again, where if you're sitting in the audience and you've just listened to a great presentation, that's been super helpful. And like a simple thing is just, Hey, how many of you found this presentation helpful? Now you, if you're going to ask that question, you better be confident that people are going to raise their hand <laughs> yeah, or not. Or something right. like that's that. embarrassing. <laughs> but then say, Hey, if, if, the, if there's one little thing you could do to help me, if you know of just one person that could benefit from this, um, could you, you know, whatever that next action, step is because there's a reciprocal thing there yes. if you've provided something of value the audience is like yeah i want to help you out like if they, yes. let me let me just take 10 seconds and think do i know of anybody or you know should i opt in for this or whatever but just again to show the reciprocal of they've provided something to me as a speaker i want to provide something to them as an audience member yeah there is a a lot of marketing strategy written about this concept of reciprocity and mm-hmm. where you see this where i personally see this very often is Trader Joe's. So right now and through the pandemic, they have not had their little samples section. They're starting to kind of roll that back out. But they don't do that just out of the kindness of their heart. They know how much more of that product they sell because you in your brain, they have triggered something in your brain about reciprocity and, Mm -hmm. oh, I was a little bit hungry and I got a snack and, oh, that tasted better. And it's kind of weird how it doesn't quite taste the same when you get it home. (laughs) It's like, or even Costco, like if you're not a Trader Joe's fan, the reason Costco does this is not just to be kind and just to, Mm -hmm. because they think you might be hungry. They know it drives sales to an, a huge number over what they would have, you know, even if they had it featured at the end of the aisle, the sample thing go drives sales in a bananas ways. And so this is, it's the same idea. If you are providing something of value, you have triggered that reciprocity little thing in people's brains. So it's absolutely appropriate for you at that point to ask for something, you know, kind of in return, but in a nicer way. Um, yeah, and the, the the sample thing also ties into like the demo video that we touched on earlier. Yes. Like, before I'm going to spend you know five, six, seven, eight dollars on whatever this grocery item is, like, can I just try a bite? You right. know, and maybe you're like, whoo, that's way that's better just, than I anticipated, right. or that it's was gross. gross. There's no <laughs> chance I'm buying that. You know, <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, and it's like there's going to be people that love it and people that hate it, but the chance you have to sample it before you you invest the money. It's the same thing with a demo video for speakers. Right. And going back to the idea of like raising your hand. Um, my kids will often tell that sample lady, oh yeah, it's so good. And as soon as we get it home after purchasing it, they're like, no, I didn't really yeah. like it. You know? And so yeah, yeah. often people will report a higher level of satisfaction, like to your face than they would mm-hmm. <laughs> otherwise. So that's the moment. That's the moment you got to grab it and get that business and get their email address or whatever it is your, your call to action is. Um, yep. all right. So it is time for the book report or their book review. So Grant, what is the book that you are going to recommend to the audience that they should, uh, spend their time learning a little bit about today? Yeah, there's a great book called rework, uh, which is by a guy named Jason Freed. And it's basically, they, they run a, um, uh, a, a, like a, a SaaS company, a, a software as a service, uh, online. And it's just a, a book about how they kind of run their business in an unconventional way, just to kind of stand out from, uh, the, the noise that exists in the marketplace. So, uh, really, really great practical book. Um, again, uh, whatever your role is, uh, in, in your practice or in your firm, uh, would definitely highly recommend rework. Yeah, it's always, it's such a challenge, the more data and information and everything that's out there just in the world in general to find a way to stand out, like in, whether it's uh, in your business life or, or whatever it might be, it's, you know, it's always a good concept to be considering. Um, all right. So what's uh, one big takeaway that you'd like people to get from this episode? Yeah, I think everything we covered here and talked about uh, is simple, but it's not easy. Yeah, simple, but it's not easy. So a, a way to think about this is kind of like, 
you know, uh, I'm no health expert by any means, but if you wanted to lose weight, what do you need to do? Well, you need to like pay attention to what you eat and you need to exercise. Like that's it. It's simple, but it's not easy. It still requires work and effort. If it was easy and simple, we'd all be skinny and beautiful, but we're not right. So it requires work. It requires effort. And so if you want to book some gigs, whether that's again, a few gigs or a bunch of gigs, like you can absolutely do it. But again, if you're kind of like, yeah, that's okay. You have some nice ideas. I see how that would work. And I might kind of dabble in it. If you Put in hobby effort, you're going to get hobby results. Oh, I love that. You want to treat this as a, like, no, this is a big part of my business, and I want to, we're going to lean into this as a marketing channel. It can absolutely work and can move the needle in your business, but you got to treat it like that. Yes. Yeah. And I feel like, like we've said a, a bunch of times now, if it's not part of a plan, and if you don't have that call to action, and you haven't, like, sat down and laid it all out, it's mm-hmm. not really going to succeed as well as it might have otherwise. Like it, the whole idea that you're talking about, just getting up and kind of winging your speech, like that's mm-hmm. not going to work in the same way as kind of winging your marketing strategy. That's not going to work either. And so many right. people do that. They're like, oh, let's try this and let's throw this up against the wall, see what's working. And um, that's not the way to do marketing. That's not the way to do your yeah. kind of speech. That's not the way to do most things in life. Um, so yeah, make a plan, stick to it and, mm-hmm. and be consistent. And yeah, all those, all of those things are, are great, but also go back and do those five, the S P E A K, all those five, uh, kind of directions that you were talking about earlier in how to, to make it all successful. So Absolutely. Grant Baldwin is the founder and CEO of the speaker lab, and we will link to the book recommendation, your website, all your social media, all of the things where people can find you and follow up on all of these great tips. I feel like this is a very, very successful and potentially successful and not very well pursued angle for marketing that a lot of lawyers can really uh, look into and have success with if they do it right. So um, that's that's the key caveat there. <laughs> it's like Absolutely. make sure you plan it and do it right. And uh, But thank you so much for being here. This was a great conversation. Such good tips. Thanks, Corinne. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to this episode of the CouncilCast podcast. Be sure to visit our website at council-cast.com for the resources mentioned on the episode and to give us your feedback. If you enjoyed this episode, I would appreciate if you could rate and review the podcast on Apple and subscribe to your favorite podcast platform. See you on the next one.